The situation is definitely getting worse every day. 50% of the civilian energy infrastructure is destroyed. A lot of the infrastructure that is being targeted will take years to replace. Підготувати медичну систему до такої кризи майже нереально. I don't believe Russia can break the will of the Ukrainian people. As long as Ukraine is able to continue its uh, supply of weapon systems, munitions from the West, it will be able to continue to fight in this war. Europe has not seen anything like this since the Nazi blitz of London and other British cities in 1940 and 1941. These attacks come directly out of the Russian playbook used in Syria and Chechnya. The damage is deep. It's difficult to carry out repairs fast enough to keep pace with the attacks. Cascading systemic impacts are becoming quite evident. Mortality and illness among the elderly and the most vulnerable are on the increase. Businesses, schools, medical services are shutting down. The situation has definitely been deteriorating in the last weeks. The electricity supply is definitely going short. For the last several days, we have not had electricity here in Lviv from between 13 to 5 hours daily. And it means that there is just not uh, uh, not enough light, uh, but there is no worms, there is no water, there is no connectivity. So I mean, that's an incredible slowdown to people's uh, abilities to operate and to, to function. At some point, the ability to repair or recover from these immediate attacks will be diminished because equipment is harder to find. If these attacks uh, escalate, then you might even see larger service interruptions than we've seen already. Especially getting into the depth of winter, that's going to cause real human challenges. That's the place where I think you'll see uh, Ukrainian society say, we can't take this anymore. And larger rates of refugees, evacuation of the cities, and a, and a lot of the challenges that are associated with a sort of societal breakdown. The needs surpass by far all the efforts of the humanitarian community. How hospitals can function without electricity? How maternities can function without incubators? How can you vaccinate or just preserve blood without fridges? And that's the number one priority now. It's generators and diesel, but also a cold chain for the vaccines and keeping access to the most vulnerable. Водночас відключення світла значно впливає на можливість людей викликати швидку або добратися до лікарні для того, щоб їм там надали екстрену ургентну медичну допомогу. Оскільки при масовому відключенні світла відключається мобільний зв'язок. При відсутності зв'язку, при відсутності єдиної системи управління бригадами екстреної медичної допомоги вже не так вдало можна координувати, в яку лікарню треба вести, з якою патологією пацієнта, не розуміючи, чи є там вільні ліжка по відділенню інтенсивної терапії. Ми можемо не надати ту медичну допомогу в ті, в тому об'ємі і тої якості, яку потребує той чи інший пацієнт. І це все показує ще раз всі дії, які робить сьогодні Росія в Україні, зокрема і обстрілом енергетичної системи. Вони не несуть нічого, окрім того, як, як дії, як, як прояв тероризму і прояв, черговий прояв геноциду, який Хоче Росія зробити на території нашої держави. These kinds of punishment campaigns have generally not been effective, and this is something that I think the Russians uh, at some point are going to have to understand, and that is that targeting a civilian population, and we've seen it in numerous contexts historically, has generally failed. It, it tends to be counterproductive. Uh, it generally has a rally around the flag effect uh, as locals harden their uh, their animosity in this case against the Russians and continue to fight 
Where the Russians uh, are, are going to have a hard time over the long run is that they have not in any way, shape, or form stopped, prevented, even inhibited the bringing of weapons, weapon systems into uh, Ukraine from, from the West. International leaders, including German Chancellor Olaf Scholz, are meeting today in Berlin to discuss rebuilding Ukraine. The reason that we have to plan now, uh, even while the war is raging in Ukraine, we have to plan for Ukraine's recovery and reconstruction because it sends a clear message that we must deliver hope. Even during the depths of the Second World War, um, American and European counterparts were planning for a peaceful future. It gave the troops, it gave the people hope that a better future lie ahead. If these attacks continue, and the expectation is that they will, as winter deepens, very hard choices may lie ahead, whether to evacuate cities, whether to suspend power, heat, hot water, indefinitely in many urban centers. This form of Russian terror, these egregious Russian war crimes, only deepen the resolve of Ukrainians, and they only deepen the resolve of Ukraine's allies. We need to prepare strategically for the worst. Better air defenses for Ukraine, deeper humanitarian assistance, quicker repairs, and serious planning for reconstruction amid an awful winter that will end ultimately in the spring.